Hello everyone, welcome to Vishesh Educational Videos. In this video, I am explaining about Kill API, one of the most important API in Unix system programming, mainly used to uh, communicate with the processes, right? If you are not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. To get the notification of my new videos, please click the bell icon. And please don't forget to like the video and please don't forget to share the video with your friends. So let me begin the explanation of kill API. So a process can send a signal to a other processes through the kill API. In simple words, if a one process wants to communicate with other process that can you uh, that can do that using the kill API. So kill API is a one form of IPC inter process communication. One process can communicate with other process, right, using the kill API, right. By default, uh, uh, the default action of the kill API is the termination signal. It is going to tell the process that you, you have to terminate by default. But uh, we have other uh, choices also. Mainly kill API is used to communicate with the other processes. Right, it will can it, uh, kill API can send a signal to other processes. Right, one process can communicate with other process by sending the signal using the kill API. Right, the sender and the recipient process, whatever the uh, processes that are using the kill API, must be related such that there has to be relation. There has to be relation between the sender and the recipient process. Both are using the kill API. How they are related? So they are related such that either sender process uh, effective user ID matches that of the recipient process or the sender has privileges. So here user ID of the sender process and the recipient process should be matched because the process is created by a user, right? Uh, if it's a sender process also, that should be created by a user. If it's a recipient process also, that should be created by a user. So for both sender and the recipient, the user ID should be same. That is inter-process communication. Process within the same system can communicate with each, with each other. That's why the recipient and the sender should be from the same user of your understanding for example a parent and a child process can send signal to each other through the kill api a parent and child process can communicate with each other by sending the signals using a kill api and the kill api is defined in most unix system and POSIX.1 standard so this is the prototype of the function prototype of the kill api so you can see there uh, the kill api uh, has a two arguments one is the process id the process id is stored in the data type called pid underscore t and we have a signal number that is the integer you can see here the signal number argument is the integer value of a signal to be sent to one or more process designated by pid if you want to send a signal you need to have the address for a process you, if you want to send a signal or a, if you want to send a signal to the group of processes you can identify that signal using the identifier that is integer number that is assigned to each signal if you have that identifier you can easily find out the signal and thereby you can send that signal to the processes that needed it or to the group of processes also that is possible right you have a pid so thereby you can find out the process you have a signal number you can find out the signal then you can send that signal to the process that is where the pid is matching pid matching process you have to send the signal right and the possible values of the pid and it's used by the kill api are for example a pid value is a positive value if a PID value, the process ID, PID, right, is a process ID, is if it's a positive value, it sends signal number to that processes. Positive value 
if it's a positive value right so signal will be sent signal number will be sent to that processes thereby process can identify the particular signal if it's a positive value signal number will be right sent to the processes if it is zero if a pad value is zero sends signal number to all processes whose process group id is the same as the calling process here uh, if a process id value is zero the signal will be sent to all the processes of the group all the processes of the group not to, not to the single process no but all to all processes of the group but the id of the group should be same of the calling process should be same as the calling process there if it's a positive value it's going to send the signal to that processes only that process but here if it's a zero it will send the signals to all the processes of that particular group but group id should be same as the calling process calling process id should be same as the group id hope you are understanding if it's a minus one it is going to send the signal number to all the processes whose real user id is same as the effective user id of the calling processes so real user id and the effective user id of the calling processes should be the same then it is then it is going to send the signal number to all the processes if it is a minus 1 if the calling process effective user id right is su user id that means super user user id signal number will be sent to all the processes in the system because we have a super user privilege right if the calling process user id is a super user if the calling process is a super user signal will be sent to signal number will be sent then if you, if the process not the signal number it can uh, identify the signal right that's why if a calling process is a super user super user means it is have the uh, all the privileges so that's why signal will be sent to all the process in the system irrespective of any process signal will be sent to all the process in the system if the user id is a super user but ex except the process minus 0 and 1 hope you are understanding if the signal number will be sent to all the processes in the system right the latter case the later case is used when the system is shutting down right when when the system is shutting down you have to send the signal to all the process to close to terminate then only we have to use this signal hope you are understanding when we have to send the signal to the all the processes in the system when the system is shutting on shutting down we have to send the signal to all the processes to terminate that's why this case is used that means sending the signal to all the process in the system is used when the system is shutting down hope you are understanding kernel calls the kill api to terminate all process except 0 and 1 hope you are understanding right so kernel is going to call the kill api when the system is shutting down right when when you when it want to terminate all the processes right but POSIX.1 does not support the behavior of the kill API for a PID value minus 1. Right? POSIX.1 doesn't support the PID kill API for the value minus 1. And what if it is a negative value? What if a PID value is a negative? What it does? It sends the signal number to all the process whose process group ID matches the absolute value of the PID. So relative value, absolute value right so so if it's a negative value whenever the pid value is a negative negative value it's going to send the signal number to all the processes whose process group id is matches with the absolute uh, value of the pid right hope you are understanding so this is the simple program and before that the return value of the kill is zero it succeeds uh, if the return value is minus one it's going to fail you can see here so right so it's a simple program so I am declaring a variable PID so 
I'm using a signal turn because uh, to terminate the signal, the default action of the kill API is what? To terminate the signal. That's why I'm using the sig term. So I'm uh, taking the PID, the process ID. So yeah, you know, if argc is equal to zero, that is a command line argument. If the number of arguments is equal to three, what it's going to do? It's going to write, so argv of zero, what it contains? Argv of zero always contains the program name, right? So signal number number will be stored in the argv of one. Signal number will be stored in the argv of one. Program name will be stored in the argv of zero because you know that argv is the array, argc is the command line argument. So the command, uh, arguments will be stored in the array called argv. Argv starts from zero. Argv of zero contains the program name. Argv of one contains your signal number. Getting guys? So it will get the signal number from the argv of one. Otherwise, it will print. It will print the invalid number. If a print is not there, uh, sorry. If a signal is not there, uh, it's going to print it as an invalid number because your signal ID is not matching. So, if signal is there, it will be an argv of one. You are going to get that signal number, right? Because you have to send that signal to the particular process. So, we are going to send the signal by using the signal number. Now, you have to increment your arc c right that means you have to move to the next slot in the array but argument should be decremented array should be incremented because if you have first arg three arguments when the first argument is uh, argv of one is fetched signal number is fetched you have to uh, number of arguments what will what we what it will become from three it will become two that's why you have to decrement the argument you have to increment the array argv from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, like that. Right? So next, while loop. In while loop, what I am doing, if the argument is greater than 0, obviously, argument should be greater than 0. One, at least one argument should be there. So you have to get the process ID. How you are getting the process ID? Process ID will be there. In argv, you are going to get that process id that is stored in the array argv otherwise it is going to print a error that is invalid pid that's why i am using a kill api kill api why i am using what is the argument i am giving to the kill api pid comma signal so i will get that process id using the kill api i will communicate with that process by sending the Signal, I will get the process ID and I will get the I will, I will send the signal to that particular process using that signal number. That's why I am using sig argument. I will send that, I will give that number. I will get, see, you can see here this signal number stored in this uh, variable sig, right? I am passing that uh, signal, signal value to your process. You can see, right, guys? So it will take kill API, it will take that signal number, it will take the process ID, it will uh, send that uh, particular signal number to that uh, process ID to that particular process. Hope you are understanding how we are going, how it's going to send the signal by, uh, by uh, checking the signal number. By checking the signal number, it will take that particular signal and it is going to. Right, send that signal number to the process because it has the process ID, kill API, it has the process ID. Hope you are understanding, guys. Very simple. Right, if it is a process ID is not matching, it will print invalid PID. Right, so here, argc uh, why it is 3 means you have to understand uh, in argv of 0, program name will be there. In argv of 1, signal number will be there. So in uh, argv of 2, uh, we will have the process id. That's why it should be equal to 3. 0, 1, 2. Argv of 0, argv of 1, argv of 2. The argument will be equal to 3. You need a signal number, you need a process id. Two slots will be there in that array. 
the win one more remaining slot will be for the program name hope you are understanding guys suppose if you have any doubts please post your doubts in the comment section thank you thank you for watching the video